Job 18. Then Bildad the Shuhite answered and said, How long will you hunt for words? Consider, and then we will speak. Why are we counted as cattle? Why are we stupid in your sight? You who tear yourself in your anger, shall the earth be forsaken for you, or the rock be removed out of its place? Indeed, the light of the wicked is put out, and the flame of his fire does not shine. The light is dark in his tent, and his lamp above him is put out. His strong steps are shortened, and his own schemes throw him down. For he is cast into a net by his own feet, and he walks on its mesh. A trap seizes him by the heel, a snare lays hold of him, a rope is hidden for him in the ground, a trap for him in the path. Terrors frighten him on every side and chase him at his heels. His strength is fast and calamity is ready for his stumbling. It consumes the parts of his skin. The firstborn of death consumes his limbs. He is torn from the tent in which he trusted and is brought to the king of terrors. In his tent dwells that which is none of his. Sulfur is scattered over his habitation. His roots dry up beneath, and his branches wither above. His memory perishes from the earth, and he has no name in the street. He is thrust from light into darkness and driven out of the world. He has no posterity or progeny among his people, and no survivor will he use to live. They of the West are appalled at his day, and horror seizes them of the East. Surely such are the dwellings of the unrighteous, such is the place of him who knows not God. Job 19. Then Job answered and said, How long will you torment me and break me in pieces with words? These ten times you have cast reproach upon me. Are you not ashamed to wrong me? And even if it be true that I have erred, my error remains with myself. If indeed you magnify yourselves against me and make my disgrace an argument against me, know then that God has put me in the wrong and closed his net about me. Behold, I cry out violence, but I'm not answered. I call for help, but there is no justice. He has walled up my way so that I cannot pass, and he has set darkness upon my paths. He has stripped from me my glory and taken the crown from my head. He breaks me down on every side, and I am gone in my hope, as he pulled up like a tree. He has kindled his wrath against me and counts me as his adversary. His troops come on together. They have cast up their siege ramp against me and encamp around my tent. He has put my brothers far from me, and those who knew me are wholly estranged from me. My relatives have failed me. My close friends have forgotten me. The guests in my house and my maidservants count me as stranger. I have become a foreigner in their eyes. I call to my servant, but he gives me no answer. I must plead with him with my mouth for mercy. My breath is strange to my wife, and I am a stench to the children of my own mother. Even young children despise me. When I rise, they talk against me. All my intimate friends abhor me, and those whom I loved have turned against me. My bones stick to my skin and to my flesh, and I have escaped by the skin of my teeth. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, O you, my friends, for the hand of God has touched me. Why do you, like God, pursue me? Why are you not satisfied with my flesh? Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself. And my eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. If you say how we will pursue him, and the root of the matter is found in him, be afraid of the sword, for wrath brings the punishment of the sword, that you may know there is a judgment. Praise God out. Sean, you ready to go?
Do I get the pulp before I Yeah. You know, we were, we had a meeting the other day. We had a church in the street in uh, Casa Grande. And guys that came through the program <coughs> here, for the pastors and on the board, basically, and everything else, we used to see the hand of God. And the whole idea is following, simply following the plan of God, the Word of God. And we do that. God is going to raise up to do His work. Now, He's going to bless us. That's all. He'll take care of you. Don't worry about that. Amen. But just the natural, following the plan of God, He's going to perpetuate His gospel. So we're talking about starting other churches and, and so forth. In fact, we, we got some neat things. I got a letter from the guys in uh, Texas. They showed me this big... I don't know what you would want to call it. It's kind of like a mobile chapel, almost the size of a bus. That they're going to, they, they're designing. They're going to build it. It's, it's got all kinds of different. It's got showers and clothes in it, and it's got a, a stage. You, it'll come out and <laughs> generators, and place where they can cook and all. So it's just it's, it's as big a church on the street thing. And I'm just thinking, we just simply just let God be God, working in our lives, and see how He's going to develop us in His plan. And I pray you don't fight against this. I mean, I don't want to talk about fighting against it. Inside. Don't fight against the plan of God. Amen. By the way, every knee is going to bow. Every time we're going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. You can fight, you know, God doing his thing here and now, but you, you can't win. Amen. Amen. And I was thinking this young man back here, he's got the same burden of going how God, God's put in his heart to start different churches, different works. You know, and if we'll simply be obedient, like today, today's a soul winning day. We'll be out and preaching on the street and, and doing all that stuff, and whatever God's called you to do, be willing to do it. And let's see how God can develop. Give us a little, before you get to preaching up there, what's in your heart? He just graduated from first phase. He's got a church. He's got a church. He's got a church. He's his wife's style. He and his wife were struggling, didn't make it. And he had to, they had to let him go from the church. But now things are starting coming back together. He's getting back involved in his church. He's getting a fire in his bone. And this is where this restoration thing comes in each and every one of us. We've messed up. God's going to forget about our messing up. And we ask him to forgive us and heal us. And then he's going to raise us up and use us. No matter what you think today, how, how you think God can't use you. That's not true. Amen. In 1989, I came out of a life of crack cocaine addiction. Uh, in and out of prison. Um, before before I was 21 years old, I had been in prison four times. A total overall, I had been to prison eight times. And um, you know, um, when I finally, in 1989, when I finally did my four, had been to prison four times, I went to God. And I began to seek God about my life. My mother was always in the church. She was always a good Christian woman. And so, um, you know, God began to deal with me even back then. He began to give me visions. He began to give me some insight. And he began to define me. Because a lot of us, when we, where we come from, we don't have an idea or even a clue of who it is that we are in the eyes of God. We have let this world define us. We've let people define us. We've let people say we're no good and we'll never be anything. But the vision still goes on. We came out here from we came out here from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we started the Faith Center West Family Church uh, in the midst of ministry because there were still some things. You know, the Bible says that um, that your gift would make room for you, but at the same time, you have to be willing to to yield and submit to God. Here they, they flew me all across the country, different churches across the United States of America. I get off the, when I get off the uh, airplane, the limousines waiting there. And, you know, so they, people, I allowed people at that time to put me up on a pedestal. I allow people to, um, anything, let me say this, anything that man promotes, there's no guarantee that it's going to stand, that it's going to stand up there. Because there.